I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. We're going to do our semifinal and national championship review a month after the games. We needed that time to digest, digest. and understand exactly what happened. Break down um, the game film. Really, I had to just come down from the ultimate high that was just being there. Yes. Um, Cody was at the game. Yes, he was at the semifinal game between Cincinnati and Alabama. I did I did spend the money and uh, fly out. Uh, Got a whole and cowboy outfit it, it, and everything. It was, it, was a, it was a fun time. Fun, fun time. Uh, Except for the game. Yeah, the game wasn't fun. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll detail a little bit more on that. Uh, Dan, do you want to maybe... Tell us what you thought of the matchups, just like. So we'll start with the semifinal games. Um, the the first takeaway I have of the first game, which was Cincinnati Alabama, is Cincinnati deserved to be there. I don't think you can make an argument. They weren't overmatched on the field. The game got a little bit out of hand towards the end, but I think that's more that the defense had been fighting so hard and the offense didn't do anything, so they kind of lost a little bit of will there towards the end of the game. And Alabama put up a couple touchdowns there at the end, but. The defense for sure is legit. That Cincinnati defense might be the best. No, they played Georgia. So I'm going to say Cincinnati is the second best defense that Alabama played all season. Uh, I'm going to, I'm fairly certain of that. You look at the talent that's going to be drafted in the NFL draft this upcoming um, April. I think it's in April. Yeah. Um, I think they proved themselves against an Alabama offense that was really kind of cooking towards the end of the season. Bryce Young was amazing and they shut him down for about a half and had a chance to win that game, had a chance to stay in that game. The offense just couldn't get it going. Um, it was just a little bit too overwhelming, I think, in terms of the offensive talent. and the, the yeah, Like I said, the defense just kind of lost a little bit of the will towards the end of the game. I do think they looked a hell of a lot better than Michigan did against Georgia. Um, Michigan got run over. Um, Stetson Bennett looked capable. Um Michigan's offense is just way too one-dimensional. It's kind of something I had thought was going to be a problem against Ohio State and potentially in the Big Ten championship game, although, what was it, Iowa? They ended up playing Iowa in that, right? Iowa, yeah. Iowa was never that good to begin with, so they didn't really need to be able to throw the ball. But they were way too one-dimensional, against, especially against a Georgia defense that might go down as one of the best defenses in the history of college football from top to bottom at every single position on the entire defense you could say that that was the greatest defense in the history of college football and I, think, way over I think I think people would, would could be able to say that I think it's going to be harder to say that if they would have beat Alabama the first time I think you could still say it because I think you can go back and that was at the end of a long grinding season. They didn't have as much emphasis or as much need to win that game. Alabama needed to win that game or they weren't getting into the playoff. So sure. Georgia, yeah, they had the motivation of winning an SEC championship, undefeated season and all that, but they weren't fighting for their lives. Like Alabama was sure. fighting for their lives. And I, I think Georgia was – it needed a little bit of that rest. It needed that rest um, – through from the SEC championship yeah. game to the yeah, national, wrestling the, conditioning. The I mean, they did look, they, they got beat up in that. Yes. In that yes, they game. did. But um, I think, I right. think in two years time, three years time, when a lot of these guys that are on this defense are stars on NFL defense, that'll really put it in, put it home that this defense will, we'll, we'll look back in 20 years and like four or five of them might be hall of famers for all we know. And then we'll be like, wow, they were all on the same team all at the same time. It, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, so my kind of thoughts on that, that Alabama Cincinnati matchup, I completely agree. I'm going to try not to repeat any of your points because I, there's not much I disagree with you on. Um, the offense of Cincinnati, which had, had players and had people that could, have stepped up, um, really just failed. Um, Desmond they Ritter. A stud red, they need a stud receiver. If they had a stud receiver, I think they would have gone a little bit better for them. Yeah, I do, I agree. Um, which, uh, when we talk about recruiting, we will talk a little bit about 
their their receivers that they have uh, picked up. Mm-hmm. Um, but that defense kept them in that game. Yes, against our like against the Heisman winner. Yep. Like you held the Heisman winner to ten points through like the third quarter. That's incredible. Yes. Like, absolutely incredible. Also, to go, go to speak, there's not what there's not a single four star that started in that game for Cincinnati. Yeah. Alabama doesn't recruit three stars. No. So it's, like when you look at the actual like starting level of talent of where they were when they entered college and where they were like at the end of their careers or wherever the hell they are. It's pretty impressive to say what they to see what they did, and yes, the game kind of got away from them. I agree, saw that happen, and really, it, it was just the offense wasn't capable of putting up points, and without that, the defense slowly kind of loses their will, and it's like, oh, they can't do anything. It's not like, I mean, in in that situation, you're you're grinding and you're you're making stops, you're putting your offense in a position where they can at least go down and score some points. They made it down the field a couple of times. They just couldn't they, – they would kick a field goal or they, they couldn't get it into the end zone. So, yeah, I, and I think at, by the end of that game, you kind of look up at the scoreboard and there's eight minutes left in the fourth and you're just – it's just like, oh, we're not going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, I'm not one – I like, I always say that, you know, you can't really complain about refing because, like, if, if you can't win the game – uh, despite the refs, then you shouldn't have been there kind of thing. Like, always said that. But the refing in that game was pretty bad, in my opinion. Um, there was holding on literally every single play for Alabama. Like, I, I would just watch him. Like, well, that's a hold. That's a hold. That's a hold. That's a hold. Like, I could see it three times on a play. And it, Bryce Young would have been sacked four or five times yeah. if, if it weren't for that holding. Um, and they just didn't call it. Which okay, that's fine. Like you can't, you can't expect to um, to get those calls. Like you, you can't. You got to be the better team. If they're not going to um, call so it, you can, they're, they're not going to call it then. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I will say that that was kind of like annoying um, because Cincinnati's offensive line did a really good job as compared to the the matchup that they had. Um, all right, well, we can kind of – go ahead. Sorry. I also think it's it's interesting the amount of guys that had, like, one or zero offers from Cincinnati. Like, the, the kid who intercepted Bryce Young um, only had one offer, and it was to Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, that's, cool. that's pretty cool, you, you get know? those stories with the group of five, too. Like, where these, get, these kids that did not get a bunch of offers and have – been put in a system that has allowed them to like kind of grow and mature and become a really good player. And you don't get that with the Alabamas. They, they, it's just a bunch of four yeah. or five stars that are supposed to be destined to be these star players. Yeah. Yeah. And it's exciting. Like seeing Cincinnati um, where they're at with this, I think that they're going to end up like probably having at least five or six guys drafted this year. And then moving forward, Guys on this team specifically, I think the, another six, seven, eight could eventually be drafted. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, you're looking at like maybe 15, 16 guys from this team that are probably going to be in the NFL someday. I agree. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool to me. All right. Um, we can uh, kind of transition to the national championship game, yeah. um, which was a really good game. It was a terribly boring SEC first half, which was, what yeah. was it, six to three at half, or was it nine to six at half? It was something stupid. Yeah. Like that. I was complaining. Ago, it was a month ago. I can't remember. I was so annoyed. Um, I did. This is like my ultimate worst thing that could happen. I did not want an all SEC national championship again. Because the SEC just irks me. Mm-hmm. Because while I realize that they are the best conference, and I'm willing to admit that they are the best conference, they're not the best conference by miles. Yes. And this just gives them ammunition to be, like, annoying. Mm-hmm. They had the best two teams this year. And you could argue Alabama, halfway through the season, wasn't even one of the best four teams in the league. 
in the, in the, Agreed. In the country. I didn't believe they should have been in the top four to start the uh, rankings, let alone number two. Yeah. Um, I'm going to choose to celebrate um, Georgia and yep. Stetson Bennett because yep. I think in the end, the best team in the country won it all. I think okay. hands down, Georgia was the best team consensus pretty much throughout the entire season. They had the slip up in the in the SEC championship game against an Alabama team that had to have that game. Georgia, I don't want to say they weren't they didn't want to win that game because obviously they won't win in that game, but it's not the same motivation levels that an Alabama would have going into that game. Um, and I think, like I said before, this defense is going to be remembered as one of the greatest defenses of all time. Stetson Bennett had his moment of glory um, in in the third and fourth quarter. He really won them that game. Um, with a couple big throws from a guy who's 5'11", and it doesn't have the strongest arm, was a walk-on, was like the fifth stream quarterback to start the season. Like that is that is what is great about college football. Those kind of stories are what make college football great. And I'm really happy for him, um, and I'm really excited for him to have a really nice car dealership in, in the Athens, Georgia area here in a couple years. Um, because he will not be playing in the NFL, but his car dealership is going to be extremely successful. He's going to sell insurance, Dan. I think he's going to be—he's going to be a car dealer. I think it's insurance. I think his dad, I think his dad is, is actually a car, a car insurance. Dealer. It's not even going to be funny. <laughs> now, that being said, I—I I completely agree. Honestly, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, no of, more 1983 the- jokes. Of the teams that were there, they were the team that I would have wanted to win. Um, that also means that now the the nineteen eighties jokes are on Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a plus for me. Um, though I dislike Notre Dame less now that Brian Kelly's at LSU, and I, I feel like I can't like Notre LSU Dame. now. I hate Brian Kelly. So much. We gotta talk about these videos that he's doing sometime. Oh uh, God, maybe the most cringe thing I've ever uh, seen. So cringe, ever. Um, I will say, like leaving the uh, the semi semifinal game, I am definitely happy that Georgia won because. While I did meet a, a few good Alabama fans that were nice and fine, I found most of the Alabama fans to be absolutely unbearable. It's just SEC um, fans in general. I was I was sitting behind or sitting in front of this guy, and I was sitting behind these two girls. They were definitely like students at UC that had driven here. They talked about driving he, driving to Dallas from Cincinnati, like. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And they, they, they're, like, getting up to, like, go to the bathroom or something. And this drunk Alabama fan throws a handful of popcorn at them and screams, Roll Tide! And starts screaming at them and, like, slobbering all over me. And I'm like, all right. Like, I know that you, your sir? sister is also your mother, but, like, calm down, bro. Um, I, someone actually said something like that to him. And he just, like, got belligerent. Oh, I'm sure. Um, and started, like, trying to fight people. Like, in this moment, like, starts trying to fight Cincinnati fans. The police got called. Um, he ended up getting arrested. Because, it, it, like, they, it was Alabama fans that ended up calling the police on him because he was being a complete douche. Yeah. Um, just, like, not cool. And then, like, on my way out of the stadium, probably 30 or 40 people got in my face. Tied, and it's like... Bro, I get it. You won. You've been here before. Calm down. Learn how to win. You'd think after all of this winning, you would know how to win gracefully. Yes. Um, but I tell you what, if Cincinnati ever plays Alabama again and we win, I am going to be the most nasty motherfucker. I'm going to be screaming roll tide in these fuckers' faces. I'm going to be nasty. Um, that would be my dream now. Um, I officially hate Alabama fans more than I hate Ohio State fans. Really? Um, yes. Like, wow. if I have to give a grade on how shitty a fan base is, like, Alabama takes an A++ on the shitty scale. 
Ohio State is now at like almost a B <laughs> comparatively. Um, like, man, it's annoying. It's uh, just, I mean, I, I, Tennessee fans rose way up my like most hated fans list. Well, I imagine. Music I imagine, man. Well, I mean, and that's shit. even worse because they, they, that's even worse because they don't have the success to back it up. They're ignorant yeah. and they haven't been successful since 1998. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, Purdue has been more successful than you since, since for the last 20 years. Wild. Yeah, man. I don't know. Um, no, nah, the national, with the national championship, the right team, in my opinion, I will say in the final rankings, they got it. Um, they Michigan got it should not have been ranked third. Oh yeah. They put it, like we, like no. we said before, Cincinnati looked better in their game against Alabama than Michigan did against Georgia. And, and, Michigan should not have been ranked third. Michigan was never in that game. Cincinnati no, was not in that game. From the beginning. Since, yeah, Cincinnati had a chance to win that game. Like going into the, for the, the third quarter, halfway through the third quarter even, I would have said, yeah, there's still, there's a, chance. still a chance. Yes. Not at, Once the first quarter was over, Michigan was done. I was like, all right, they're done. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, That's do you have I anything got. else? Yeah, nope. I don't have anything else on the national champion. Um, looking forward to uh, the season next year. See who surprises us. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. All right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, make sure you like, comment on this video. Tell us your month long, month late national championship reactions, playoff reactions down in the comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe for all this 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 wonderful content that you're getting. Um, check out our Spotify. Uh, we'll have a link to that down in the description. Also, follow us on Twitter. Um, stay up to date with all our video releases and all of our opinions and Cody's hot takes and Cody fighting with random SEC fans. Um, and then follow our personal Twitter accounts, which are down below us, uh, below each of us, and then they'll also be down in the description. But thanks for watching again, and we'll see you next time. Love you.